got it bad Ain't no other that could sweep you up like a rubber Straight up, I gotcha Making you fall like that Break it down Ooh, when I look in the mirror I want your heart to do too I got this superstar glow, so Ooh, to the boogie line The size that burn left to my feet I like the moon right with me, baby I'm the nice guy Got the right body and the right mind Rolling up the party, got the right vibes We like haters Fresh boy, pull up and we lay low All the bands get moving with the bass low Got the army right behind us when we say so Let's go No, how do you feel about? Okay, I'm gonna go get to this music. Yeah. Okay. Like. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to A4's July Town Hall celebrating film and media. I'm Lisa Gold, A4's Executive Director and a quick accessibility check. Uh, I am a Hapa, half Korean, half white woman with dark hair pulled up in a bun wearing a black sleeveless top against a blurry white background. Um, thank you all so much for joining us tonight to learn about some of the uh, incredible films and film festivals that are being created by the AAPI community uh, to help share all of our incredible or some of our incredible um, rich and diverse stories. So for those of you who are familiar with A4, you know that we're dedicated to ensuring greater representation, equity and opportunities for Asian American artists and cultural organizations. Uh, through resource sharing, promotion, and community building. And Town Hall is one of our signature programs that helps us fulfill that mission. So um, anybody who's been to Town Hall before, normally I ask this and you guys can um, put your, your virtual hands up. Um, so it's a little bit more challenging to do this uh, in the Zoom, but thank you for uh, hands up and thumbs up and all of that, I appreciate that. Um, so I am uh, going to just share a few Zoom protocols before we start. So um, please mute yourself or turn off your sound if you are not um, presenting. Uh, we are recording this event and we'll be posting it online uh, for you all to watch later or share. Um, and if you note, there is a raise hand function accessible by clicking on the participants icon. Um, so we will want you to do that later. Um, if you want to volunteer for a uh, micro pitch, a 30 second pitch. Um, and if you have any questions, you can just message us in the chat box. So feel free to introduce yourself in the chat box or send us a question or share love for your fellow presenters. So that's um, what the chat is all about. Um, we also have closed captions that are available via Rev. So if you want to enable your captions, you should see a CC icon uh, at the bottom of your Zoom screen menu that has the words live transcript below it. So you just click on that icon 
to enable your captions. Um, so here's how tonight is going to go for those of you who did not raise your hand and have not been to a town hall. Uh, we have two featured presenters and two groups of short one minute pitches. And I will be ringing a bell for those of you who are doing one minute pitches at the end of your time. So um, I hope you will please be considerate of your fellow participants here and uh, wrap up at one minute. Um, I'm gonna have to mute you sadly if uh, you go over your time. So after our first featured presenter, I'll call the names of the people that are giving the one minute pitches in group A and your names will appear in order in the chat box. So please be ready to go when your name is called and then we'll repeat the process um, again for the second group of the second presenter, the second featured presenter and the second group of uh, one minute pitches. And then after all of those, um, the pre-registered one minute pitches are done, if anybody else would like to share information or um, just introduce themselves, just raise your hand um, and we'll, we'll give you the opportunity to do a final uh, 30 second pitch. And again, we'll call you in the order that you raised your hand or you listed your name in the chat box. Um, and you'll have 30 seconds. Um, also, if you are doing uh, a 30 second pitch, please write your name and or social media handle and or website um, in the chat box. So people that are interested in what you're sharing can follow up with you. Uh, and then afterwards, we'll have um, a breakout room, a couple of breakout room conversations. So you can follow up and ask questions and just network, introduce yourself. Um, and you can switch breakout networking groups at any time you have the power and control there. So just click on the breakout rooms um, and you'll see who's in each room and you can move your cursor over the blue number next to your name to move to any breakout rooms. Or you can just message us or chat with us and we'll move you into another room. So I'm gonna do a couple of quick announcements and a land acknowledgement before we begin. So um, special thanks to Priscilla, our programs and communications manager and Teresa, our CUNY core our CUNY Cultural Corps intern for their support and help tonight. Um, everybody note that we are recording this event and we're gonna post it on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Uh, so we would love for you to keep your cameras on, but if you don't wanna be recorded, it's okay. Um, and if you wanna share anything about tonight's event, feel free to tweet, hashtag A4 Town Hall, um, tag us, that would be great. Um, and then also, please, please do us a favor and fill out the post-event survey. Um, we're always trying to improve and shape our programs to be more relevant to your interests and your needs. So your input makes a difference. Um, we read these surveys and we um, make adjustments to our programs accordingly. So um, please fill that out. Um, we, are, we just dropped the, the link in the chat box. So we'll send it to you tomorrow as well, but um, please fill out the survey tonight. It really helps us out. And I want to share a couple of upcoming events. Um, tomorrow at 2.30 in the afternoon, we are co-hosting an information session with the National Endowment for the Arts and the Asian American Writers Workshop um, about the American Rescue Act grants for organizations. So if you're an arts administrator, um, and even if your organization has never applied to the NEA before, you are eligible. Um, as long as you're an organization, you're a 501c3, so um, please join us for this workshop. Um, there, these, are, these are substantial one to two year grants ranging from 50 to $150,000. So um, please sign up. There's a, um, there is a new, hopefully we will drop a different <laughs> link in the chat. Um, so you can also go to our website and just click on the calendar to find out more about uh, that session tomorrow. Also, um, the third and the final cycle of the City Artist Corps grant opens on Tuesday, July 27th, and it closes on August 10th. Um, the second cycle closed today. So if you haven't applied, you have to apply. This is $5,000 for artists that are living in New York City. Um, if you have any questions about how to apply, um, go to the NIFA website. There's an FAQ list. We recently hosted an information session and that's mm -hmm. on our YouTube page. Um, or you can just sign up for a one-on-one uh, -on -one information session if you still have questions, or you can email me, um, or you can email Ting Lin, who is our um, City Arts Corps Grants Coordinator. Um, so she is at CAC at aaartsalliance.org and she can answer your questions as well. 
So please, please, please sign up for those. Um, they are very important ways of getting um, information about this grant, which is a very easy application process. Um, two more programs on Tuesday, next week, Tuesday, July 27th from seven to eight. We are um, presenting, co-presenting an in-person conversation with photographer Pixie Lau, uh, branding expert Angela Y from Milk, and um, the Photographiska exhibition manager Grace No. And this is um, in conjunction with Pixie's show that's up at Photographiska right now. So tickets are normally $35 for this talk and the museum exhibition, I'm sorry, for the talk and museum admission. But um, you can get discount tickets with um, the code AAAA. But tonight we are offering the chance to win um, two sets of tickets. So two, two sets, each one of two tickets um, for free admission to the museum and the talk. So if you're interested in attending the talk and checking out the museum, it's gorgeous, um, please enter the raffle now. Um, and we are gonna draw the names tonight of the winners after the end of the 60 second, uh, sorry, 30 second micro pitches. Um, so there's a link to the raffle entry form in the chat. You have to be on the call tonight at the end of the, the micro pitches to, to win. So um, sign up for that, super easy. You can uh, just click on that link right now. Um, and then finally, next Friday, the 30th at eight o'clock, we're presenting another In Well Life event. Um, it's a concert at Lincoln Center. So as part of the Restart Stages program, um, our A4 virtual resident artist, Nigi Miyajima and her jazz quintet and uh, experimental artist, Ravish Momin and his dancer and a dancer um, that works with him, Ishita Mili, they're gonna be performing as sunken cages and they will be um, each doing individual sets and a joint new composition uh, that is created especially for this event. So there's gonna be projections and dancing and amazing music. So sign up for free tickets. You can get priority tickets with the code WATER21. Um, so the link to that is also in the chat. Um, and the same evening at Lincoln Center, um, uh, A4 artist Jessica Chen is gonna be performing um, as part of Andrea Miller's live performance installation called You Are Here. So that, that starts at seven. So you can make a whole evening of uh, A4 at Lincoln Center. Um, free tickets are available for Jessica's performance, the whole um, event through the Today Ticks Lottery. So that is um, also in the chat. So that's, that's all the events for, um, for July. Um, there's more next month. So uh, make sure you sign up for our newsletter to find out what's going on. And uh, as always, we wanna thank our supporters at Capital One and Con Edison, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, in partnership with the City Council, uh, the New York State Council on the Arts, with the support of Governor Andrew Cuomo and the New York State Legislature, um, the National Endowment for the Arts, the Howard Gilman Foundation, the Teeger Foundation, and so many generous individuals for making Town Hall possible. Um, and if you wanna be among our list of supporters, you can text a for donate to the number 202-858-1233, or just visit our website um, and feel free to make a donation because we appreciate it. So um, now I'd like to offer just a brief land acknowledgement because before the pandemic, we would be meeting in the A4 offices, which are on the unceded lands of the Lenape and the Canarsie peoples. But since we're meeting virtually, I'd like to share a digital land acknowledgement, which was written by Canadian theater artist, Adrian Wong as we're all occupying very different physical spaces. Um, some of us from as far as Honolulu. Uh, so um, since our activities are shared digitally to the internet, let's also take a moment to consider the legacy of colonization embedded within the technologies, structures, and ways of thinking we use every day. Uh, we're using equipment and high-speed internet um, that are not available in many languages. I'm sorry, that are not available in many indigenous communities. Even the technologies that are central to much of the art that we make leave significant carbon footprints contributing to changing climates that disproportionately affect indigenous peoples worldwide. I invite you to join me in acknowledging all of this as well as our shared responsibilities to make good use of this time and for each of us to consider our roles in reconciliation, decolonization and allyship. Okay. So now um, I would like to introduce our first featured presenter, Anne Hu. Uh, Anne came to the US from mainland China 
1979 and has led an incredibly successful business career uh, before turning to filmmaking in 1992. Anne's latest feature film, Confetti, which she's gonna discuss tonight, will be soon released in the US and China. And in addition to her role as a filmmaker, uh, Anne is the founder and president of Media Assets Inc., which is an investment company involved in financing uh, media projects and film productions and other ventures. And Anne aims to not only bring investors, production and distribution teams from different countries together, but also to specialize in telling authentic, authentic stories that are tr true to the sensitivity of um, our respective cultures. So I give you Anne Hu. Hello, hi, Lisa. Do you hi. see me? Hi, I do you see, see you? Yes, you see me. See okay. Me. Thank you, Anne. All right, I don't see myself, so you know, I'll just go ahead. All right. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for coming, and thanks to A4, Lisa, and Priscilla for providing this uh, wonderful opportunity. Um, Picasso, Einstein, Spielberg. Tom Cruise, Churchill, and my daughter, Michelle. What do these people have in common? It is dyslexia. And I made a film about it. Um, it's called Confetti. Here's the trailer. I like to believe that everyone has a story, that the world is one big web of stories. Lan Chen's story begins at a local school in a small town called Shang Tang. When you see a W, is this what you see? is something that's called dyslexia. The brains of some people are just wired differently. They just need a different system of teaching. My mom, she took me and we left home. We traveled over hills and mountains, and we get here. You must be Land and you must be Mei Mei. Mei Mei good English. Mama no English. Thomas failed to mention that. I set up an interview for Mei Mei at a new school. It's a school for kids like Mei Mei who are left behind by the system. Smart kids who learn differently. All I ask of you, Miss Chen, is that you give us your trust. All I want my daughter be normal. Why can't she be normal? Okay, come you said she can be normal. Your daughter will never be normal because none of the children here are normal. But they are capable of great things. Okay, am, am I back, Lisa? Yes, you're back. Okay, all right. So basically, you know, it's like a, you are confetti, I am confetti, my daughter's confetti. And uh, right now she's in high school and uh, she's on headmaster's, li uh, headmaster's list. So she's okay. Um, well, as the uh, statistics uh, prove, that about 10 to 30 percent, I mean, one to three uh, people among uh, of every 10 of us that are to a certain degree dyslexic. Um, so the purpose of this film 
is really to just bring social awareness and to let people know there are tools that can revert uh, the fate of millions of people. And while making this film, the test for me is really how to tell um, an a, a authentic story in the um, simplest way. Um, I cannot say how much I succeeded because I mean, you will be the judge after you, um, uh, you watch the film. But um, I can tell you that by um, being able to work some of the uh, best uh, talents, uh, we're able to create some very unforgettable moments that are bigger than lives. And I want to tell you about Amy Irving, uh, the Academy Award nominated best actress. She played the role of Helen in our film, being a uh, distressed wheelchair bound writer. And uh, there's a scene that is to happen in her uh, bathroom. The story goes that her shower head was broken for a long time and she never cared to fix it until one day the sound of water um, attracted her to roll up to the bathroom and uh, she looks up. Um, the script goes, the sitting, the Steaming water pours down from the new shower head, fills up the top below, and forms a water pool that folds and wavers, seems to offer her something familiar yet fresh. She contemplates and resolves. Well, you know, the challenge is really the last two words. You know, she, con she contemplates what, and uh, she reaches her resolution. And how do you show that, you know, within that two seconds? And at a time of uh, shooting, and uh, we found that we actually got stuck in this very tiny bathroom. Um, with the wheelchair in it, there was only one foot. Um, from the wheelchair to roll up to the top. And instead of looking at this uh, wonderful pouring shower water pool, uh, waterfall, she actually was facing you know, a whole bunch of uh, crew people all packed inside of that little tub, you know, with the camera, with the boom, and then with the, uh, you know, all kinds of tools and lights um, right in front of her up close personal and um, you know she just has to uh, roll up to them and to find her resolution um so suddenly i heard amy yelling out quiet i have to see god in two seconds the set uh went quiet someone called action and uh, amy began to roll up inch by inch to the tub. And I was behind the monitor and watching closely at, uh, um, at Amy's face and, um, and eyes. The amazing changes occurred. And we could see her experiencing the loss, the pain from her past. And together I was also experiencing with her the love she's finding. And um, love is God. She find her God. And the tears came up. And those are the honest tears only very skilled, talented actors were able to do within such limited time and a short space. I hugged her and thanked her afterwards. And uh, um, well, Confetti is going to open in theaters nationwide on August 20th. If you feel you're special and I don't know why, you will find the answer in this film. 
um, after you watch the film, please feel free to reach out to me with your comments, thoughts, critics, questions. Uh, you can reach me through our website, confettifilm.com. Well, nice meeting you, everyone. And uh, thanks again for coming. And uh, thanks to Lisa and Priscilla and A4 for your awesome work and support. Thank you. Thank you so much. And very much looking forward to, uh, to seeing the film. So we'll definitely be sharing it um, with our A4 community. All right, so is everybody ready for group one of our um, registered pitches? Uh, so we'll drop those in the chat. Um, so first up is uh, Rama Mohammed, then uh, Joyce Jing, Marissa Shipley, Marina Slander, uh, Jingjing Tian, Joyce Eugene Lee, uh, Xing Zhang from Film Lab, George's Bridges from also from Film Lab, uh, Abner Torres Delina Jr., Eunice Chen from Asian Cinevision, Vivi Hu, and Lena Alfonso from the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council. Um, all right, Rama. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, sorry. So, Teresa, can you drop all of those names into the chat so people know the order, um, just to make sure? And then, um, Rama, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll give you uh, 60 seconds and you can start. Okay. I'm just wondering if I'm supposed to see my presentation or not. Oh, there we go. I can see it now. Okay. Go ahead. Perfect. So my film is available upon request. And we can go to the next slide. Safa, a 20-something down-in-the-dumps youth worker and aspiring filmmaker, quits her day job after an embarrassing breakdown triggered by a series of epic failures. Stressed by nosy aunties and an overbearing Somali mom who has zero tolerance for failure, Safa is forced to go on welfare and join a three-month work readiness program where she meets a bunch of fellow misfits struggling to find their place in the world. Safa ends up having to choose between keeping up appearances or following her dreams. So the characters are Safa, um, who's a dreamer. She is, blows where the wind, goes where the wind blows. Um, Safa's sister is Muna, who's successful in the complete opposite. Safa's mom is Hoyo, a single mother who's been widowed. And her best friend, Pinky, who she meets in her class, is a rebel. Some of the story ideas I've presented, I can't go through all of them, but um, the first episode, the first pilot is a youth hip hop dance recital that Safa is in charge of choreographing. It goes wrong when the DJ plays the dirty version of the song and parents are bombarded with curse words and are outraged. The other episode that I really like is Private Dancer. On her first day of her job readiness class, Safa finds a pair of stripper heels inside her desk and eventually meets Pinky, the owner of the heels, who, quick, who quietly threatens her. Class ends abruptly when, disgrunt when a disgruntled boyfriend shows up and holds the entire class hostage until his girlfriend lets him see, his, see their kids. The adventure and chaos ensues. Uh, these are my inspiration and my tone. Insecure, obviously, Issa Rae, I May Destroy You, May Kella Cole, and Chewing Gum have in inspired me greatly. Um, next slide is basically some of the visual references that I hope to showcase. And thank you so much. I hope I got it all in. Thank you very much, Rama. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, all right. Next up is uh, Joyce. Hi. Um, can you guys see me here? Yes. Great. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Joyce Shin. I'm a recent graduate from the Columbia Film Producing MFA program. Today, I want to present my thesis project, which will be filmed this November because of pandemic. Uh, it's a short film written and to be directed by my classmates, Ken Ge. We're both international students from China and largely because of our cultural background. This short film centers around a mixed Asian girl Blue, she reunites with her dad in her new home in New York and gets trapped in between her parents' passive aggression for the first time. The story wants to explore this generation trauma among immigrants and how children absorb this past on pain aim. And because the lead minors' race and gender are key to this story, uh, we are having difficulties to find our Blue. And that's the main reason why I'm reaching out to you today 
Uh, I know many of you are much more resourceful than we are as studying filmmakers. So we love to get more recommendations and suggestions on casting our young Asian lead as also for the father role. So if you have anything to share, feel free to send me an email afterwards. And that's it for my pitch today. Great, thank you so much, Joyce. Um, if you wanna drop information in the chat, you are welcome to do so. All right, um, next up is Marissa Shipley. Marissa, are you ready? Yes. Go uh, Thank you. Um, I am an art department coordinator in TV and film based in Los Angeles. Um, and I'm also the vice president of our union 871. We're a local that is majority and historically female. Um, and we are impacted by huge pay inequity and really low wages in this industry. So we have, as our department coordinators work really collaboratively together to communicate about our rates and everything else. Out of that group and communication, um, one of the things that I do is clear artwork for use on our TV and film projects. And I've been on some projects that want to support diverse artists that reflect the community that we're talking about. So I worked on the show Vita. Um, the showrunner really wanted to showcase Latinx artists, queer artists, because um, that was kind of the what the show was, the community that the show was about. So I created an Airtable database that uh, artists can submit themselves into. And then anyone who is working on film projects who wants to get cleared artwork and pay artists for their work can get the link from me. And this is what our database looks like. So we are able to support a community of diverse artists and um, work collaboratively together as coordinators. Great, thank you so much, Marissa. Um, we will share your website. Well, it's, it's on the uh, on the slide there, but we will make sure everybody who's interested would um, be able to get additional information about it. Um, okay, next up is uh, Marina Salander. Marina, are you ready? I am. <clears throat> oh. All right, so this is actually a pitch for a live performance, uh, so it's not film related. Uh, so on Saturday, September 4th, from noon to 8 p.m. on the corner of Washington Street and Water Street in Dumbo, Brooklyn, on a six foot by six foot platform, see she will come to life. So she, she will activate this space, this platform, uh, every hour on the hour, all day long to invoke our geographic closeness to the ocean, but also uh, to invoke the sea within uh, us all. The activation on the hour will include um, dance and movement improvs by moi, Marina Salander. Uh, it will also include original music by Swedish composer Felix Söderberg and uh, poet laureate Magdalena Gomez, poetry by her. Uh, I may have surprise, I will have surprise guests inhabit the platform throughout the day. When see she is not on the platform, there will be ways uh, for passers-by and audience members to interact with the platform. This is all free. It's supported by Brooklyn Arts Council and Dumbo Bid. Uh, please, if you're in the area, come by and uh, support the arts on the streets. Great, thank you so much, Marina. Um, sounds great. Next up is uh, Jing Jing. Hi, Jing Jing. Are you having a little technical difficulty there, but try try again. That's better. Yeah, oh, but now we can't hear you. <laughs> um I don't know. Maybe you want to try to uh, work out your audio and then come back. Um, you might, if you disconnected your AirPods, select a different microphone. There is a carrot next to the microphone button. Is 
that working? No? No, I don't think we can hear you. We're gonna have to come back to you, Jing Jing, I'm sorry. We will, um, hopefully you can get that worked out. And at the end, after Lena, um, we'll, we'll bring you back and hopefully you'll have your sound worked out by then, but we're gonna have to move on to, um, to, to Joyce, okay? Sorry, we'll come back for you. Uh, Joyce, Joyce. Hi. Hi, it's good to see you. Yeah, you are ready to go. Okay, so this is a pitch actually for a media arts project, so a little bit different than the others. Um, I'm the founder of an art project called Firewall. It's a not-for-profit interactive art project that investigates online censorship by comparing the disparities of Google searches in Western countries versus Baidu searches in China. So essentially we're a pop-up internet cafe and we go to different places around the world where you can search both the internet in China and the US and see the difference between state censorship online and corporate censorship online. Um, we're currently seeking to hire two part-time software developers, so that's where you come in. If, you're, if you know anybody who's a computer programmer that would be interested in working on this project, please forward this on to them. Um, the first is a database developer to merge our WordPress backend into a new database that we built last year. And then secondly, we need a front-end developer to make Firewall more user-friendly um, and help us design the data visualization that can ha um, highlight interesting narratives found in the data. Um, this is just an example of what you can see on our website, which has an archive of our past search results, and we welcome you to engage and vote on whether you think the searches are affected by censorship. And that's all I have. <laughs> Sorry, I talked really fast. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, Xing Cheng, Xing, are you available? Are you on, you're on deck? Uh, okay, we need to um, spotlight Xing. Are you here? Yeah, I am. Sorry, oh, I think oh. it just glitched for a second. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, my name is Xing Chong. Um, I'm a part of the Asian American Film Lab. Sorry about um, the lag just now. I wanted to talk about our 72-hour um, shootouts um, coming to an end. We had it in June, and we have the, the winners and everything ready, and we are announcing it with uh, Asian American International Film Festival hosted by Asian Cinevision with John. I think, John, you're here. So hi, John. Um, yeah, so we have an after party that's going to happen on the August 14th as the poster right here. Um, um, our awards ceremony and the top 10 selection, uh, the top 10 films of this year's 72 hour shootouts are going to be available as a video on demand um, service at the um, Asian Cinevision website. Um, we would love for you guys to come and check it out. And we have the after party as well. Um, more information will, will be coming out via our social media and also um, mass emails. So stay tuned for this. As you can see, the Eventbrite um, ticket is, is down there. Um, you can RSVP um, to join us for the celebration. We have some pretty cool um, stuff coming out with the shootout. So. Um, I will send out my email and also our Instagram pages and Facebook pages for um, anybody who's interested. So yeah, Georges, Georges did you wanna say anything? Um, yeah, I just wanted to say we're, we promote ethnic and gender diversity in the film industry. And uh, whether you're an artist or a filmmaker and you have a project and you wanna get some type of feedback on your project, just contact us. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of us, we'd love to have you and um, feel free to contact us at um, info at film labs org. All right, thank you guys. The information's right here. Great. Um, so tag team, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Great. All right, up next, uh, Abner. Uh, Abner Delina. Abner, are you with us? Yep. Do you hear me? Do you see me? I see you. It's uh, you 60 Hello. seconds. Let's go. Perfect. 
Hello, um, good day. So I am Abner, I'm an actor, director and founder of Black Canvas, a post-disciplinary, post-human, post-traumatic collective, and uh, we focus on care culture and global justice and ecological healing. And um, next slide, please. Um, we have a very exciting project. It's a collaboration um, by me as a Filipino uh, artist and uh, with Tomohiko Kyogoku as a uh, Japanese artist. Um, and we call it Moments We Cannot Control. So. Um, it's a uh, next slide, please. It's a uh, focusing on this investigation and the paradoxes of control choices and chances. So it's really a hybrid intercultural physical theater collaboration. Um, so some of it will be filmed and some of it will be live. So it's a, it's a developing project. Understanding how our culture and nature transforms us. We are inviting the audiences to meditate in more complex nuances and magic of life, embracing new meanings of freedom in this time of crises, um, including all the racial justice um, and climate justice concerns. So how to help uh, produce a Black Canvas with partial grant from Japan Foundation Manila. We dream to develop this project with the support of interested collaborators, sponsors, funders, or festival organizers or fellow Asians or Asian alliances such as this and communities in diaspora. So um, if you wanna contact us or me, I placed um, some details in the chat. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much, Abner. Um, next up is Eunice Chen from Asian Cinevision. Eunice. I know you're- Oh, here. hi. Hi. <laughs> Great. Just turned on my video, so I don't know you can- Okay. Hello. 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 Um, so I'm Eunice, uh, representing Asian Cinevision. This year is our 44th Asian American International Film Festival, and it will kick off on August 11th with the New York City premiere of our opening night film, Snakehead. Um, it's an exclusive in-person screening, so get your tickets. Um, this, will be, this year, our festival is combined uh, in-person and online programs, taking place from August 11th to 22nd, uh, in which Asian American Film Lab is also a part of. Right now, our tickets are on sale for the Early Bird Gold and Cinepass, and that will end August 4th, and then that will go into uh, full price afterwards. Uh, in addition, um, taking a pause of everything, Ace will also be making a tribute to Corky Lee, who we consider the unofficial Asian American Photographer Laureate. Um, we sadly lost him earlier this year to COVID. And as some of you within the community already know, Corky was an original founder of the Basement Workshop, Asian Cinevision, including the Asian, Amer Asian American Arts Alliance. Um, he's known for his work from the streets of Chinatown to Vincent Chen, post 9-11 New York, to his uh, joining photo of the Transcontinental Railroad at Utah. He was also a pioneer in the documenting of the Asian American movement. Uh, we will be inviting friends, scholars, community members to contribute personal expressions in his honor. And we will launch the site during our festival, August 11th to the 22nd. And if there are any uh, body here who are interested in becoming uh, community partners for some of the films that we have going on, um, please feel free to reach out to me at the end of this, um, Eunice at Asian Cinevision. Thanks so much, Eunice. Uh, yeah, we miss Corky so much. Um, oh, okay. Um, next up, uh, Vivi Hu. Uh, Vivi, are you ready? Hi. Hi. You have yes. 60 seconds. Go ahead. All right. My name is Vivi, a single songwriter. I write songs that's um, a mix of lo-fi hip-hop, R&B, and Mandarin pop. I write songs about my um, experience as immigrants here in New York. Uh, I'm always open for any kind of collab. So if you're interested, please reach out to me. I'll drop my info in the chat. And here's a clip of my song.
Great. Thank you so much, Vivi. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, be sure to drop your information in the chat. It was beautiful. Uh, next up is Lena Alfonso from uh, LMCC, who's going to be talking about some funding uh, for filmmaker. Lena, are you with us? Yes, I'm here and ready. Awesome. Go ahead. Hey. Um, well, good evening. My name is Lina Alfonso, and I'm the Program Manager of Grants and Services at Lower Manhattan Cultural Council. I'm here this evening to share information about LMCC's Manhattan Arts Grants, which provide funding from the Department of Cultural Affairs, New York State Council on the Arts, and the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone to Manhattan-based individual artists, arts groups, and nonprofit organizations presenting arts projects and programming to the public in Manhattan in 2022. Our grant programs support a wide range of activities across disciplines, including film screenings, media exhibitions, festivals, and more. The deadline to apply is September 14th by 5 p.m. LMCC will offer information sessions for new applicants in English, Mandarin, Chinese, and Spanish. And you can find more information at lmcc.net slash RSVP. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Time to time to spare, Lena. <laughs> Appreciate awesome. that. Um, we're going to try to go back to Jing Jing. Do you, I hope you have your sound worked out, Jing Jing? Are you? Um, how's that? How's that going? Can you hear <laughs> me? Is yeah. That good? Yay. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Thanks, you. everyone. Go, go ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Jing Jing. I'm a filmmaker based in New York. I'm not pitching anything tonight. I made a short film about a Chinese cowboy a few years ago, and I never presented it here. And I thought it'd just be fun to present the trailer here. So. That's it. Great. Thank you, Jing Jing. Fantastic. Um, all right. So that brings us to the, oops, sorry. I got to stop my timer here. Um, so that brings us to the end of uh, group A. So thank you all. That was great. Such a good, interesting group of artists there um, and funders. Thank you. Um, and, and film festival programmers, all of you all. So um, please don't forget to enter the raffle for the tickets to Pixie Lau at Photographiska. Um, and we'll drop that link in. If any of you came late, we're raffling off uh, four tickets, two sets of two tickets to um, Pixie Lau's talk at Photographiska on Tuesday, the 27th. It includes museum admission and a talk and it's a great museum. So check it out. All right. Next up is our next featured presenter, Christine Choi, who is the director of the Academy Award nominated documentary, Who Killed Vincent Shin? Uh, originally trained as an architect, Christine received her master's degree from Columbia University and a directing certificate from the American Film Institute. Uh, she's currently a full professor at NYU's Tisch School of the Arts, and uh, she has made more than 85 films, which have been broadcast on all the major networks and festivals around the world and she's received more than 60 awards, including an Oscar nomination. Uh, she is the recipient of numerous prestigious fellowships from institutions, including the Sundance International Film Festival, the John Simon uh, Guggenheim Memorial Foundation, um, and the US Fulbright Program. Uh, she is the founding director of Third, uh, Third World Newsreel and is a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, or the Oscars. So I could go on and on. There is just um, so many accomplishments in Christine's bio, but I am going to um, see the floor to her and let her share with you um, who her her story herself. Christine. Hi, where I am? How come I cannot see myself? Uh, did you turn on your video? Can you hit start yes, video? Yes, I did. Okay, perfect. You are on. We can see you. 
Yay, hallelujah. First of all, I want to congratulate my old friend Jody Long just won a National Emmy. And I made a film about Jody. Her last name is Long. So therefore, the title of the film is called Long Story Short. Um, I am really happy to be here tonight and because I've been around for a long, long time. I was a loner. I was early, early filmmaker. I Maybe one of the young people can do a little bit of research. I would think I'm really consider myself as one of the earliest Asian American filmmaker in America. Yes, before me, many, many, many years ago, I don't recall, but I did know there was James Wong Hao, who was cinematography for John Huston. He went back to China uh, before the Qing Dynasty uh, was uh, before the uh, uh, Republic of China, he shot some footages, but was never realized. After that, there was a filmmaker named John Wing Lum, I think. He made a black and white silent film about New York Chinatown. Then was me. <laughs> and then was, you know, of course, a you know, chance missing, etc. Uh, I started filmmaking because I was very frustrated. I was frustrated of the fact that representation of Asian and especially women who in the mass media, who were not the people who I've known. You know, I grew up in Shanghai, so I speak Chinese. Then we went to Hong Kong, which was colonized by British. And then I went to Korea, which is neo-colonized by America. I also speak Korean. And then moved to Japan. And Japan, is, it was a monarchy, queen and king. And I came to United States as a capitalist, advanced capitalist society. Yes, we, as uh, most Asians, we were told that we were basically marry, have children, and women never really looked upon us in art. I remember my mother was telling me, oh, I don't like a Jiang Qing. I don't know, young people, you probably don't know Jiang Qing. Jiang Qing happened to be Chairman Mao's third wife, and she was an actress. And uh, because she was an actress, it was a poo-pooed, you know, actress. They don't have a brains, etc. After I arrived in the United States, like most Asians, I was pursuing so-called reputable profession. And I knew how to draw innately when I was a little kid. You asked me, but in China, the drawing is you imitate, if it's a cell phone, you have to draw exactly look like cell phone. If it's a car, you exactly cut you know, reflections. There's no abstractions. So I was a very good imitator. And on top of that, funny thing is, I don't know, I don't believe God, I don't believe Allah. I had photograph photographic memory. In Asia, when you take an exam, you have to write exactly what the textbook written. And I can write everything what the textbook said. So I was very, very good student. I excelled, number one, number one, number one. I get into all this good school, da, da, da. Unfortunately, I arrived in the United States and went to college, Princeton undergrad. And they told me I was called into the dean's office saying that I was basically copying the textbook. I said, yeah, that's what we did. 
Any bit from Asia. What's wrong? No. In America, everything is interpretation. It's not a copying. You know, basically, you know, so what's wrong with that? He said, did you copy the textbook? I said, no. I said, no. So I think she or him, I don't remember at the time, asked me at the question. And then recite, I just recite an entire paragraph by memory. <laughs> so here you have major culture conflict, okay? In America, in Western society, it's interpretation. In Asia, it's a memory. So here is a major culture clash that I found was intriguing. But again, and I was so appalled to see the portray of people like myself. It was so stereotyped and they either prostitutes, they beggars, and the most Asian actress were played by a white character. And my, many of them, they spoke gibberish English, like me today as well. I don't care. Uh, um, so I became a filmmaker out of anger. And that was what happened when Spike Spindles and I, you know, I filmed in at the time where the famous Cui Ha Xu Ke, you know, he's very famous director. Once upon a time in China, and then, I don't like any of his movie, but doesn't matter. Uh, we got together and we said, why don't we do something for Asian Americans? So me and Cui Ka and Peter Chow, three of us got together. We said, well, we create Asian innovation. Okay, that's what happened. And Asian innovation gave a birth. And subsequently, I found myself, no, I don't only want to talk about Asian stories or, or women's stories. I want to talk about much larger issues, such as African-Americans. How did the African-American culture influence me? Civil rights movement made me to get full scholarship. When Vincent Chin story happened and of course he's already dead and uh, i went to one of this lecture hall i think it was in NYU law school there was a helen zia showed up she was a tiptoe lady you know at princeton always having matching top matching skirts and i was with sunglasses and power to the people i was a more interested in african-american struggle and she showed this clip which is a rendering by the court artist and it's very sleazy. And she said, we are raising money for this murder case. And I looked at her, I said, Helen, do you remember me? She said, yes. I said, I'm no longer an architect, I'm a filmmaker. I will volunteer for you to make a five minute clip so you can use that to raise money for the, 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 the legal, legal course. And she said, right on. Go ahead. I didn't have any money, so I may pick up the phone call, da da da, usually. So and so, can you give me some money? I just fly to Detroit to do five minute club. And I got some money from, per, I, I think it was uh, hmm. Presbyterian. I don't Church. have an answer for that. Yeah. Is there something else I can help with? What? Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? What is this? Is Did I hit the wrong thing? Is your phone, is, are you talking to Terry on your phone? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. So I went, to, I went to Detroit, I met Lily. Obviously my Cantonese is not good. She spoke to San, but we made it up because I love to cook, you know, I love to chit chat, you know. And I made a five minute clip without knowing. Five minute clip became five years. <laughs> no, more than five years. And uh, that's when I really encountered talking about institutional racism. I already made films and ultimately you need money like most of the young filmmakers and the only place you can go is 
New York State Council Arts, Corporation Pu Pu Public Broadcast, la -di -da, I went to public broadcast, which I already had a finance from previous work. They asked me three questions. Number one, who could be your constituency, uh, con constituencies? Because Detroit is up in the middle of America. Duh, I hate that question. Who will you be audience? Ooh, audience need to be developed. Am I correct? Number two, you were trained as an architect. How can you handle such a hardcore murder case? Duh. Third, how can you be objective since you're Asian? Can you believe it? All right, I won. Back to Detroit, I went to local PBS station, met with about Robert Larson, who was a station manager. I said, listen, what, who, 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 are, the, who are your constituencies? He said, yeah, 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 we not only Detroit, but we also syndicate to greater Toronto. And Toronto had a large Asian population. Okay, bingo, one down. Number two. Don't you have anybody who have a journalist background? Oh, yes, Juanita Anderson. Tom's woman, Juanita. Whoa, she is tough, big black woman. She not only have a one degree journalism, I think she has a two or three degree. Fine, she is in third. How can I prove that I can be objective? I couldn't. So the motherfuckers attach a white story editor on top of my grand saying, every inch, everything I do have to be approved by this guy named Irv Dresner. He from WGBH, white guy with a trench coat, show and tell, show and tell type of filmmaking. First day he saw me, he said, I've seen some of your film. Seems like you really like music. Damn right, I like music. Now, you can never use the music. I was like, oh, really? How so? It's psychological manipulating. Mm -hmm. I said, it's a Motown. It's a Motown. It's a birthplace for Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, and everybody else. Come on. No, you cannot use the music. So every single shot, everything I shot, and I was a camera person also. That's why I have have a back problem. And I have to show it to him for approval before the next penny comes in. Can you believe it? It's like talking about corporate welfare system. <laughs> Ultimately, I had to use music. I'm sorry. And he didn't like me. So I changed the lock in the editing room. I locked the motherfucker out of the editing room. And that was the end of my grant from Corporation for Public Broadcast. So me and Renee had to raise money, all kinds of little grants, little grants there, the parties. And finally finished. And I went to Sundance, as you might say, a filmmaker, you know, Sundance. Those days were not called Sundance, called U.S. film. I got there, I was the only non-white. Filmmaker, audience, and skier. <laughs> I was in competition. Of course, I got nothing, you know, because they had no clue who the Asian Americans were. And uh, every morning we have a little coffee with a rubber refer. I said, Robert, I don't think your the title of your film festival is correct or US film. I think you should call white people's film festival. <laughs> he said, why? I said, Look at it, it's a white snow, white audience, white jury member, white films, and my roommate upstairs is white. Who's that? Steven Sonneberg. Sex lies in video. I said, the phone rang nonstop. In the, those days, didn't have iPhone. And you know, like a regular phone. And I had to answer all his phone. Maybe speak, speak to Steve Sarba. No, 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 Steve, it's your film. So finally I said, Steve, come on, 
Let's change the room. Let me go upstairs. You, you, you be downstairs, okay? And uh, I said, I don't think he, it is not U.S. film. And subsequently, he changed the sentence. So I made some kind of contribution indirectly, you know, whatever. Um, I became a professor. The reason I became a professor because your children can go to school if it is mine and if it's tuition free. Young people, listen, tuition free. <laughs> and why you, it became very, very expensive. And I became a professor. I went in, I was the first non white professor ever hired by Tisch School of the Arts. So, therefore, if you spell backwards of uh, Tisch School of the Arts, I would say it's called Shit School for Stars. Yeah, and I was abused. I was terribly abused. And then later on, I became the chair of a graduate school, worse, worse. And uh, ultimately, what I'm going to say is, I made almost, I think almost 100 movies, so short and big and long. Who killed Vincent Chin is something that I devoted, I had no, never thought about I would invest in some goddamn five, six years in them goddamn movies, <laughs> you know. But ultimately, I think it became a landmark case. It was the first civil rights case involving Asian American. Before Vincent Chin, there was another case took place in Mississippi Delta, who also re re made the, a documentary by Bertha Lum, Bertha Lum versus the Board of Education. And Bertha was excluded from, excluded from the white school because they thought she had a Negro blood. So my education, yes, I have educated under communism, colonialism, neo-colonialism, advanced capitalism, came to America, my true education was literally from African Americans struggle, slavery, and how the African Americans paved the road for Asian Americans today. Unfortunately, we as Asian American, we also have extremely prejudice. That prejudice is not innate. And because of racism is export. It's it's like a commodity, commodity. You can export that. If you ever see, or oh, you're too young, when I witnessed the GIs, and there were 45,000 GIs stationed in the middle of a goddamn Fifth Avenue in, in Korea. Why? They had no clue what they were doing, but it was clearly segregated. There's a white GI, black GIs. Same thing happened in Vietnam, okay? I mean, this is one of the reasons I have issues about Apocalypse Now. Wonderful film, beautiful, entertaining, but never really addressed the issue of discrimination among the GIs because it was made by white filmmaker. And white filmmaker is fine, but also as women that we have been looked upon as prostitutes, many of them, what of Susie Wang, as you know, very famous, Michael Cimino's film, uh, 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 well, the, 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 the one that's an awful film, uh, we even boycott it. Um, Michael Cimino's film, and then it takes place in Chinatown, okay, I will remember. And the films that portray Asian, portray women, portray any kind of others was always came from mainstream ideology. And I think as a filmmaker, yeah, the crafts are very important. I'm really, really good at it right now. I can shoot, I can draw, I can record, I can edit. You know. But also it's a oh, very- Christine, I'm so sorry. I mean, I hate to interrupt you, but we want to see your film. 
and that we don't have that much time left so i want to make sure that we get no no there ain't no film i don't oh, you're not going to show the clip from vincent chin tonight i didn't upload that oh okay i thought um i had a little misunderstanding with the person. oh okay apologies for that Wait, let's go on for next young people's pitch i'm around and you can always find me at the NYU. If you want any help, please do contact me. Thank you so much, Lisa. Yeah. Bye. Oh, Christine. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We had, um, yeah, we had a little bit of uh, a confusion there. But please stay for the networking afterwards because I'm sure people want to talk to you oh, and oh, hear oh. more of your amazing oh, stories. So I just got. And from whisper to a rallying cry. The print. And by the Asian American woman writer, um, Paula Yu. Paula Yu. Okay. We'll yeah. share that. Um, we can drop that. And also, people, you can, um, we'll drop that in the chat. And feel free, everyone, to um, just, uh, you can save the chat by hitting the three. Yeah. Dots next to the file folder at the bottom of the um, the chat menu. But Christine, please stick around because I know people have lots of questions for you. There's all sorts of love for you in the chat. People are so grateful for you speaking up and sharing and all of the work that you've done. You are a legend and we are so grateful for you joining us tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you stick around, um, we are going to move on to the next round of one minute pitches. And we, um, all right, so everybody on deck, Ray, Gannon, Ashni, uh, Micha, Kazu, Lucy, Michael, Mam, Cynthia, Anna, and Nicole. Um, okay, thank you for dropping those in the chat. Everybody, you've got uh, one minute because you're not legend yet, sorry. And uh, <laughs> Ray, are you ready to go? I am ready. All right, um, you've got a minute. <clears throat> Thank you, Lisa, Priscilla, and Teresa for providing this amazing opportunity. So glad and grateful to always be supported by A4. Hi, everyone. My name is Ray Jordan Nachan. I use he, him pronouns. I'm an Indo-Caribbean theater artist, and I'm the founding artistic director of Exile Tongues, a performance collective that provides financial, artistic, and collaborative support to artists of the global majority centering diaspora. Um, through Exile Tongues, I'm co-producing First Sight, a play um, that is essentially a queer Indonesian love story. Um, over generations. It's going to premiere at the Tanks Line Fest next month. Um, my collaborator and I are looking for a set designer and a sound designer. Um, we have a modest budget. Um, please reach out if you're interested in helping out. Um, and I'm also working on two documentary theater projects um, about uh, the history of environmental violence in North Brooklyn. So if you're interested in talking about um, the environment, gentrification, um, things like that, please reach out to me. I'm always interested in collaborating and um, connecting with people. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. With five seconds to spare. All right. Next up, uh, Gamin. Gamin Kang. You with us? Yeah. Hi. My name is Gamin. I'm a Korean musician. I study Korean traditional instrument in Seoul, Korea. I grew up uh, in Seoul and I moved to New York uh, about four years ago. I have been going back and forth a lot of times uh, between Korea and New York. Um, I, yeah, I would like to introduce my new project that is inspired by artist Chang Jin Lee's video work, which is about comfort woman. Uh, so this video is uh, created by artist Chang Jin Lee. And I, I would love to hear their voice and their song um, has a lot, a lot meaning. And uh, this is music that I, music and video that I um, created for those two. <laughs> and I will prefer you just watch a video shortly. So thank you very much, Gamin. Uh, next up is Ashni. 
Are you with us? I'm here. To change the spotlighting on our end. There we go. Ashni. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm a musician, singer songwriter, uh, and I am looking to continue to make uh, visuals for my songs. I'm also interested in um, composing for film and TV and licensing the work I'm making on my own. Um, so I just wanted to share a clip of a music video that I've already made. I've got another one in the works and some new music coming out soon, but just to give you a sample. Um, yeah, go ahead. That's it. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Um, next up is uh, Micha Chang. Micha? Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you, but hold on just a second till we okay. get you spotlighted. Okay, go right ahead. Okay. Hi, my name is Micha Chang. I'm a longtime resident of the Roy side. I am primarily a painter and occasionally make videos. I have a place in Berlin, and I go there every year. I met Eva in 2000, 2017. First, I saw her paintings in a show. Paintings were very large, and the characters were small. Why does she use such a huge empty space? We became close friends. She has been in Berlin for 20 years, like I have been as an immigrant artist. I was drawn into uh, how she was raised with two mothers and one father in the same house. In the video, there are two lights. The lights are shining on a duet of a female singers. In my conversation with Eva, we sat next to each other instead of facing each other. We are the two silent lights. Thank you so much, Mija. Um, next up is Kazu, Kazu Watanabe from the Japan Society. Uh, Kazu, are you with us? I am. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kazu Watanabe. I'm the Deputy Director of Film at Japan Society, uh, which is a nonprofit cultural organization in New York City uh, dedicated to US and Japan relations. Uh, and every year we host a film festival uh, in the summer called Japan Cuts Festival of New Japanese Film, uh, which is the largest festival uh, dedicated to contemporary Japanese cinema in the Americas. And today, uh, just today we announced uh, the lineup for this year's edition, uh, which will happen both online and in person at Japan Society uh, uh, from August 20th to September 2nd. So we have uh, eight films screening in person and about 20 feature films and 12 shorts online, uh, which will be available throughout the US. Uh, it's a really great lineup, uh, lots of variety from blockbusters, independent films, documentary shorts, avant-garde work, work etc. So I hope you can check it out. Um, you know, attend Asian American Independent Film Festival and then join us for Japan Cuts right after. All the information is available to browse at japansociety.org. Thank you very much. Great, perfect timing. Thank you so much, Kazu. We'd be happy to share that. Um, next up, Lucy Yao. Lucy? Hello. Hi. Oh, we've got a little bit of an echo there. Hold on, pause. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right, cool. Um, hi, I'm Lucy. I am a toy pianist and composer, and I'm part of Chromic Duo. Um, we're multimedia artists and we work in film, dance, uh, VR, and AR. And I want to share a little bit about a project with uh, immersive sound walk um, that starts in collaboration with New York Philharmonic. Um, so Emerald Futures is an AR sound walk that guides you through a year of transformation and growth um, to uh, landing at Amanda Finbody Bakya's mural, We Belong Here, in response to the anti-AAPI hate 
Um, let's go to the next slide and can we drop it to 34 seconds? And we also are working on uh, launching uh, another um, augmented reality soundwalk and are looking for composers, um, any kind of filmmakers um, who want to collaborate with us on this. And it will be to, to increase like foot traffic um, in Chinatown and to also help out local businesses there. So 34 seconds. Good. You can hear our work. Um, is it playing? No, it's not playing. Um, oh, Priscilla, can you? Uh, you have a sound thing. Is there, um, Lucy? Do you have a, a a link that you can drop into the chat so people can hear it? Yeah, yeah, I can do that and you can listen individually. Um, yeah, so let's see. It's not letting me paste some slides. Okay, there's like technical. Okay, well, we can. Uh, we'll just keep going. Okay, up. yeah, if you can just wrap it up. And, okay, uh, sorry. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, so so we're basically looking to, to collaborate with any any composers or um, filmmakers um, to help us launch this project. So, thanks. Great. Okay. Um, thanks for sharing. Any filmmakers? <laughs> Again, maybe you can just uh, type into the text box. So into the chat box. Um, great. Okay. Next up, um, Michael Manessa. Uh, Michael, you are here. All right. Yes, I'm here. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks again, A4, for your continued support. I'm a big fan. I try to come to these things as much as I can. Um, I'm a New York-based Filipino-American filmmaker, and last I'm looking for actors. Um, last year, I got a, a grant to make a short film, so I wrote this uh, script, Asian Persuasion is going to be an all Asian cast comedy. It's about a public marriage proposal gone haywire. And uh, yeah, I'm looking for actresses. That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Great. OK, yeah, feel free to share um, what you're looking for. And we can also post it on, on the website and the opportunities. Share it out in the newsletter. Um, next up is uh, Nam, Nam Duan. Oh, yes, yeah, I'm here. Good. Great. Can you um, hear me? I can. Go right ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa. Um, hi, everyone. It's such a, a pleasure to be here. Um, I'd love to share with you Centuries in Steel. Um, it's a mixed media and illustrated short film telling the history of anti-Asian racism and violence in the U.S. And this is basically our team's attempt to tell our own narratives with our own crafts and reflect more truthful versions of history because we all know how history is taught here in this country. Um, and our team is um, an API woman that team, including director Sally Tran. Um, her IG is on the screen, as you can see, um, director of photography Isabella Tan and a group of illustrators, artists, and filmmakers. And you can watch um, the film through our website. Um, I will link it in the chat below and um, can also check out our resource list on the website as well. Um, and there's another film that we made previously on six decades of police brutality against black people in America that you can view through the website as well. And we would love to hear what you think. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Nam. We definitely want to hear more about that. Um, sounds Thank good. You. All right, next up is uh, Cynthia Chen. Cynthia. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Cynthia, and I'm going to be directing a music video with musician Tina Hanai. Um, Tina is a musician whose work kind of delves into folk Shintoism, survivalism, ecology, and biomimicry. Um, and Tina and her and this work that she's doing right now is um, supported through the Women's Fund for Music. Um, you can check out her stuff on her Instagram or her SoundCloud that I'll link um, in the chat later. So the video that we're trying to shoot is set to the track Night Horses, and it's a surrealist depiction of the beginning of trauma healing um, through the story of this girl who goes to a clinic where a raccoon-sized bee administers acupuncture to clear toxic blockages, inspired by the fact that honeybees apparently can sense the Earth's magnetic fields. And so we're going off there. Um, tonally, we're inspired by Andrew Thomas Huang, FK Twigs, Tierra Whack. Um, this will be kind of the opening song to the rest of her album. So we're looking for people who are excited to collaborate and join us. We're shooting in September. We're especially looking for VFX artists, makeup artists, or stylists, and, uh, and producers. Uh, thank you. That's it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. 
Um, yeah, speaking of the Women's Fund, uh, next up, Anna Wang. Anna from our friends at uh, NIFA. Anna, are you with us? Hi there. Yes, I am. Great. Can you see me? Hello. Hi. So great segue. My name is Anna. I work with uh, New York Foundation for the Arts. I'm a program coordinator for the NYC Women's Fund. Uh, one of our past recipients is Tina. Um, so the NYC Women's Fund for Media, Music, and Theater provides grants to encourage and support the work that reflects voices and perspectives of all who identify as women. It's the third cycle of the fund. It's going to be opening next week, Monday, uh, July 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So the program provides finishing grants for film, television, and me uh, digital projects. Uh, please note that projects will need to have completed principal photography to be eligible. We also provide funds for the creation of music recordings or videos, production funds for live or online theater, um, and applications for this closes mon uh, on Monday, November 1st at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, leading up to the close of the applications, our grants team will be hosting a series of inf information sessions designed to help artists build a stronger application. First one will be a pre-recorded session on August 11th, um, but we'll also be having live sessions with Q&As throughout the application period. Information will be on the website uh, come Monday, so check it out there. Thanks, everyone. Great. Thank you, Anna. Get that, get that money, ladies. All right. Um, and last, uh, last but not least, in our pitch group B, uh, Nicole Michali. Nicole, you are with yes. us. Yay. Hello. Okay, hey, go right ahead. Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole Michali with Kindred Kapwa. We are Asian American uh, Pacific Islander production company. I am an actor turned writer turned now filmmaker. As Christine Choi has said, it's time for us to take back our narrative. So I just finished principal photography and a music video called Bathwater with my lead actress. And now we're doing a rap party and it's a fundraiser for AAPI nonprofits in California, but everyone can watch it on Kumu. It's gonna be streamed live on August 8th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So I put all my info in the chat. Please come support, even if it's from home. And keep writing and creating, y'all. I think it's really important, especially now. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicole. Great. All right. So thank you all. Um, love hearing about all these projects and opportunities. So um, before we move into the networking session, um, is there anybody who would like to give a 30 second micro pitch? Anybody that wants to share information, just raise your hand, type your name in the chat. Um, and if we don't have any micro pitches, we don't have, okay. Oh, Delaney and Jasmine. Okay, we'll start with Delaney. You've got, uh, 30 seconds and then next up is Jasmine. Uh, go right ahead. All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Delaney. I'm here on behalf of the Human Impacts Institute. Our Creative Climate Awards are an annual series of events that showcase artists creating climate inspired public works. So this year's Creative Climate Awards are focused on the intersection between health and climate change. We currently have an open international call for films that fit this criteria, anything from PSAs to shorts to documentaries to music videos. Films will be considered uh, for licensing by PBS All Arts, and you'll also have a chance to win prizes up to $1,000. You can apply for free on our website today. Thank you for listening, and I've had such a great time listening to all of your stories as well. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, if you want to just drop all that info in the chat, that's amazing. I appreciate that. Um, next up, Jasmine. Hi, everyone. Can Hi. You know? Yeah, you got 30 Hi. seconds. Uh, so, Hi, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, this is my first uh, time joining a town hall, so pleasure to be here. Um, but I'm a writer, director, editor. Um, I wrote a feature last year called Tender Years, and it's uh, around a young Chinese-American woman's uh, relationship with her 
immigrant parents, uh, specifically our mother and their clashing ideals on race, culture, and family, uh, which basically takes place amid the rising threat of the pandemic. Um, we recently adapted and shot it as a short film last month, uh, mostly in New York and New Jersey, uh, with the majority uh, Asian American cast. So it was featuring uh, Karen Ten Lee, Jeff Lee, Wai Ching Ho, Pen Ten Lee, uh, and more, and uh, really proud of the cast and crew we assembled it, which is now in post-production. Uh, so you can follow along. Um, I'll put the uh, handle in the chat in case anyone is interested. But thank you. That's that all. sounds great. Thank you very much, Jasmine. Um, all right. I think that I do not see any other hands up. So we are going to um, introduce, oh, we're going to announce the winner, the winners. Um, Priscilla, do you yeah. have the winners? Yeah, so we're going to draw um, two numbers. Um, Teresa, can you give me two numbers? And then I will announce the two winners. And the two numbers are 12 and 9. Okay. 12 and 9. OK, that is Ray, Batan, and Lucy Yao. <laughs> Amazing. Ray. Ray, Achan, and Lucy Yao. Great. So we will see you on the 27th at Photographska. Um, you can we'll, uh, we'll just follow up with an email and your names will be on, uh, on the list at the door. Great. Congrats on that. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so thank you, everybody. This is so great. I hope you will join us for the virtual networking session. Um, we've got about 10 minutes. So we will break you out into um, groups of about, let's see, how many people do we have left here? We've got 42 people. So we'll probably drop you into um, about eight groups of five. Um, Priscilla is going to <clears throat> break out the group. So just um, introduce yourself, um, share a few words about what you're doing, comment on somebody else's pitch. Um, yeah, and then like just share, pass it on to the next person. We always like to start with the person whose birthday is closest to today, letting them start um, the conversation. So we're gonna break you out. Priscilla, are you ready to break everybody out now? And hopefully, um, like if you wanna move groups, you're welcome to do that too, but we hope you'll have a chance to, um, to just chat and network with everybody, ask questions. Um, all right, I think we're ready to go, uh, Priscilla? Yes, I just, um, I'm opening the room. So Great. we have five. Great. Great. All right. We'll see you all in a few. Um, so uh, welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much. I uh, hope you all had fruitful, interesting, uplifting conversation. Um, got to meet some new talented people. Um, and we hope to see you back uh, in two months. I don't remember off the top of my head, but the next town hall is going to be it's going to be in September. So make sure you sign up for our mailing list. Also, um, the, please fill out the survey again if you have like ideas on a specific theme. Maybe you'd like to hear for town hall, or you want to join us as a presenter. Um, feel free to just share your thoughts with us. Um, and I think that's all for tonight. So. Again, thank you all so much for joining us and we will see you at a new, another A4 event, hopefully very soon or at the next town hall in September. All right, everybody have a great night and thanks again. Take care. <laughs>